in January 2020, Thomas John, the seatbelt psychic guy, had a residency in Vegas. And what that means is he was given a show and it was at Caesar's Palace, uh, Cleopatra Lounge. And it was a venue where he would stand on stage. They'd play this music in the background and he'd wander around the room and he would call on people or be drawn to people and give them a reading. And they were always very specific. And um, at the beginning of the year, January, 2020, I was sending people to attend his show and we were able to um, analyze a lot of the recordings. So I'm not going to go into depth about all the recordings because, oh my gosh, we have so many stories we could tell. Today, I'm just going to tell you one. So this was his show. And what he would do um, is he would post on on uh, Facebook. Oh, well, he would post on Facebook that he was going to be having a show there. And I just want to point this out really quickly that he um, made this post March 5th, 2020, about how excited he was for people to be getting their tickets for um, his show uh, because the ticket master had updated to start showing, you know, selling tickets through July. But you and I and everybody else knows what happened starting in March and April of 2020 is Vegas shut down. Well, pretty much the whole world shut down uh, for this little tiny thing called a pandemic, worldwide pandemic. And he didn't notice. In fact, he was trying to sell tickets because he thought he was going to still be in Vegas in May and June and July of 2020. So one of the things that Thomas John used to do is he would post on his Facebook page. He would make these posts saying that I'm going to be in Vegas on this day and get tickets and we can do a meet and greet and so on. Okay. There, there's nothing wrong with that. Obviously that's just promoting your event, but what he would do this every day, and what would happen is people would go and they would write afterwards, they write underneath with their Facebook page that they were going to be attending. And once they've made that, you know, I'm going to be there, then he has their Facebook page right here. He just has to click on their Facebook page. He doesn't have to look them up in depth. And once he has their Facebook page, he only has to select, oh, I don't know, three or four or five people who are going to be attending that day and do a quick search through their Facebook page. Trust me, it's not hard to do. Uh, I and my team can maybe within 10 minutes, we can get enough information to do a reading on you. We only need two or three things to be able to do a really in-depth personalized reading. And so I'm sure he is. he's the same. It, it's really not hard. And if he can't find you or he can't get into your Facebook page enough, he doesn't need to be your Facebook friend. Trust me. He just needs to be able to look at it. If he can't find enough or your Facebook page is so locked down that there's no way you could see anything, he just moves on to another person because we have screenshot after screenshot after screenshot of him asking people if they're going to be giving, if they're going to be attending. And you can see he immediately responds within minutes, you know, within that time, are you going to be coming? And she's like, okay, I'm getting conflicting statements about something totally different about the meet and greet. But we, what he was able to do is he was able to go and make a calendar of sorts of who's going to be attending to each event. Because sometimes he would post and say, I'm going to be um, here today. Who's going to be showing up? And people say, oh, I'll be there next week or I'll be in there on the 14th or I'll be there on, you know, they'd give a date. And you just have to keep a little log. It wasn't hard. I know this because I and my team did this. We had a spreadsheet. We just kept track of who was saying they were going to attend and we would have their Facebook page there and we could come up with items that we found on their Facebook page. We thought that if he gave them a reading, this is probably what he would say. And we're pretty right. So I have, like I said, I have multiple stories I could tell on that, but today we're just going to do one. But that's how he would know who was going to be attending. And that's how he knows how to hot read them because... It's right there. It's really not hard. Okay, so here we have just one of many of these kinds of announcements that they're going to be attending the event. And this is Kate Colfett. And she says, I will be attending on Sunday. Okay. And then if we look over here, we can see 
that on January 19th, 2020, which is the first week he was at Vegas for his uh, show. And we can see that somebody posts, oh, you look marvelous. You're going to Vegas. And this one says, oh, you look so pretty. Have fun, safe travels. My guess is you're going to Vegas to see our friend Thomas John. And of course, that's where she's going to go. Now, this is a psychic medium, Kate Colfett. Now, I'm going to tell the story of Kate Colfett and how she, um, her relationship with Thomas John. So let's listen to some audio. It's a three-minute audio that I've cut down to one minute because it's a lot of ums and ahs and stalling and repeating himself. So I've cut it down to one, just one minute. Let's listen to that. I have put some text on the screen to help really show in case you're having problems hearing it exactly what he's saying. He's on a stage and he's like being drawn to somebody in the audience. And that's what you're going to hear. He's being drawn to Kate and um, he's going to uh, be in contact with her, her dogs that have departed this world. Um, I'm also hearing the name Duncan, but I want to connect this with an animal. You have a dog, Duncan? Yes. You have a, like, kind of blonde? Yes. Okay, perfect. Then I want to come to you. Yeah, so there's a girl dog here, too. You've got the boy dog, yep. and then there's a little girl dog. Yes. Well, not a little girl, but yes. girl dog. You and her had very much a soul bond. Yes. Okay. And can I ask you, would you listen to her breathing? Or did you like to hold her close and listen to her breathing ever? Uh huh. It'd be heart to heart. Oh, okay. And you would actually feel, feel her brain. heart. Yeah, because she's given me that feeling. I have to tell you, I get, I'm getting goosebumps, but I feel such a soul connection with this dog. In you. So, and not that I don't with, because I feel like the the Duncan one too. And this one was kind of a blonder too color. Yes. They're both kind of like lighter blondes. They're both blonde, long hair dogs. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to play that same recording. But this time, I'm going to show you some screenshots, which were very easily found on Kate's Facebook page. Uh, remember, she announced she was going to be there. Um, remember that her Facebook page is wide open. I'm not her Facebook friend, and I had no problem whatsoever within minutes finding all this information about her. Um, I'm also hearing the name Duncan, but I want to connect this with an animal. You have a dog, Duncan? You have a, like, kind of blonde? Yes. Okay, perfect. Then I want to come to you. Yeah, so there's a girl dog here, too. You've got the boy dog, yep. and then there's a little girl dog. Yes. Well, not a little girl, but yes. girl dog. You and her had very much a soul bond. Yes. Okay. And can I ask you, would you listen to her breathing? Or did you like to hold her close and listen to her breathing ever? She would hug me. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. And you would actually feel, feel her brain. heart. Yeah, because she's given me that feeling. I have to tell you, I get, I'm getting goosebumps, but I feel such a soul connection with this dog. In you. So, and not that I don't with, because I feel like the, the Duncan one too. And this one was kind of a blonder too color. Yes. They're both kind of like lighter blondes. They're both blonde, long hair dogs. Yeah. Here is <clears throat> the same day. This is January 19th. There's Kate and there's Thomas John right after the show and Caesar's Palace. And she's telling everybody to go. Duncan and Maggie came through. Well, we know that. Everybody knows that. <clears throat> so who is this woman and what is her relationship to Thomas John? Let's take a quick look. Here she is in 2019, 2016, I'm sorry, 2016, four years before her this Vegas adventure. And she's part of the show with Laura Smith and Thomas John. Now, if you're interested, I have other videos that break down exactly what was going on in the Lisa Smith, Laura Smith uh, radio show. There are videos on my channel that you can check out that show him hot and cold reading people who called in. He knew who was calling in, in most cases. So Kate is going to be doing a show with them and 2016, here she is in 2017 or oh, 2016. I'm sorry. Here she's going to be doing a um, 
special event, Messages from Heaven with Thomas John, February 2017. There she is with her curly hair. Here we are in 2019. There's Kate again. She's got a different hairstyle, but this is 2019 and she's doing a special event. She's one of the mediums that's going to be there. Here in 2020, um, this woman, Lima, is talking about how there's going to be another event. And there's Kate again with Thomas John, who is the star of the event. And that was 2020. Oh, here she's doing pet readings. Interesting that she she likes to do pet readings. That's her thing. She was doing tarot and then now she's doing um, other mediumship stuff. She does a lot with animals. So here she is with Thomas John, $35. And you might get a reading September, 2021. Oh, and again, here in 2022, same thing, pause in heaven. Um, I'm laughing just because how ridiculous it is. I'm not laughing at you guys. Trust me. Uh, here she is again. So she has a very strong relationship with, with Thomas John. And I could have gone on and on and on and on on Kate's uh, Facebook page, just all the different times that she's associated with Thomas John, mentions of Thomas John, thanking Thomas John, Thomas John this, Thomas John that. She has a very close relationship with him, which makes it really odd that she went to his show in Vegas and as if they don't know each other she gets she gets a reading from him and he's a little specific now okay amazingly specific like almost as if he's reading her Facebook page and that wasn't hard to do so it's I don't know if if there's an agreement between them or she told him something but I think it's pretty likely that he just read her Facebook page and she may not know that he hot read her because I, I have a feeling, I don't know. It's just women's intuition or something. I don't know that she didn't realize that he was reading her Facebook page. Well, one thing I want to mention, one quick thing I want to mention is I've known of Kate for quite a while now. And the reason is, is because when I first met Thomas John, it was a reading that myself and my boyfriend, uh, Mark Edward had gone to in person with Thomas John in LA. And we noticed that there was a woman who was getting a reading ahead of us, very specific reading that Thomas John was giving her. And she was kind of like dabbing at her eyes like this, you know, and then Mark looked at her and said, she's not crying for reals. He was sitting right, right across the aisle from her. He could see very clearly that she was just kind of, you know, and, uh, so she got on a radar then. And then we had gone to the VIP afterwards where we paid the extra money, got a book um, and his book. And whenever he was going to go out into the little audience and he was he was like, there's about 20 of us. He's handing out the he's you know taking the book from them and he's going to autograph it. And he <laughs> she hands it to him to autograph and she says, make sure you spell it correctly this time. And I'm thinking, this time? What do you mean, this time? How well do you know this person? And he signs it and hands it to her. Now, the name Kate is C-A-T-E. That's how she spells it. But it's commonly spelled K-A-T-E. So, you know, maybe he was, he was spelling it wrong at some point. We know they have a long relationship together. And then during the Q&A part of at this event I was attending, I asked if he had any other students because he was talking about how he has students. He gives lessons on mediumship and he went over and put his hand on her shoulder and said, yeah, I sure do. And I thought to myself, what? <laughs> okay. And I took a picture. So here's the photo of us in that VIP room in case you're interested. And here's Kate right there. So here's this little room with all these medium uh, other women in there. All women. Of course, it's all women. And, oh, there's a guy back here. But it's mostly women. And she gets her, she gets a reading from him. It's the same woman that was sitting across from us getting a reading that was, she wasn't really dabbing at her. She was dabbing at her eyes, but she really wasn't. She wasn't crying or anything like that. And so 
there she is pretending again sitting in the audience pretending she doesn't know him getting her reading from this from the psychic now if you're she's a psychic supposedly herself i don't know why she she needs to get a reading from thomas john i guess they have levels of um you know skill i guess that's what they would say and you know she's not going to be as specific as he is if if she's not hot reading so she's sitting in the audience and getting a reading from him and that's not necessarily a problem except that nobody else in the audience really knows that they're friends that she's his you know she's taking lessons from him that they know each other they have a long extended um history together and when that isn't revealed, it's kind of unethical because we don't, he's relaying stuff to her as if he's getting it from the the other side. But we don't know how much he's getting from her that isn't just happened to be stuff he already knows. So, you know, I have problems with that. I don't know if other people do. Tell me what you think. If you like this video, please subscribe. Please hit the little bell. Please share the video. I'm trying to trying to educate people about mediumship. It's not as simple as just somebody calling out letters, names, and throwing out common names. It's not just that simple. There's a lot more to it than, than what people think. I'm going to let Thomas John have the last word on the end of this video. Um... And like I said, there's just something where you kind of can just know if somebody is legitimate, you know. Um, it's a feeling that you get. It's, it's just a sense that you get, you know.